Here we are again with Logix Pro, the batch mixing lab. We're going to first start with exercise one, filling the batch mixing tank. Um, pretty much everybody had something similar to this to start out. We have our normal stop start circuit. So here's our stop button, our start button. And then we have pump one, which is pumping into the tank. And we have pump one latching. And then I have a normally closed in line with that with our count up. So this flow meter here, flow meter one, is going to send out pulses as it spins. Those pulses are going to be used to increment a count up, a CTU, um, at a counter address, counter memory address. Um, so really what that means is, um, if I didn't explain this before, you can just hit this red X here, just flip back and forth between your simulation and what you would normally see with RS Logix. Um, here's your counter addresses, your C5s. Here I'm using C50, which is my top row. Here's my count up, count down, done, uh, overrun, underrun, preset, and accumulated. This isn't reset right now, so it's uh, actually probably should have a done yet. Well, yeah, on the screen it doesn't show done, but uh, I have my done bit as a one down here, which is correct because my accumulated has reached my preset value. And here's my preset, and then the accumulated is what actually counts up when the flow meter starts running. So we can see that run here. Um, let me reset everything. So it's tricky with this lab specifically, you have to do a bunch of these resets on your timers and all that um, and your counters um, because you don't have any resets built in to reset this counter back to zero. You have to go manually reset the program every time. And you think it doesn't work because you see that there's still stuff in the tank, but in, until you put it in run, that's when everything changes back to the way it should be. So again, we are looking at C5, here we go. So right now our preset's 315. Our accumulated zero, nothing else is made because it's not enabled. Um, when we, I guess I got to go back to the simulation to start it, don't I? And it's still not pumping. There it goes. Huh. Anytime I switch out of that, it automatically uh, stops the program for some reason. I've never seen that. There's lots of weird little bugs in here like that. <clears throat> so now it won't restart because it stopped in the middle. That's awesome. Okay, so we're going to start this simulation. You're going to see the, the pump is going to start right away when I hit the start button. I'm going to make that. So it's going to go through, activate the pump. As the pump is making fluid pump into the tank, this flow meter is going to start spinning from the fluid going past it. It's going to flicker this on and off. It's going to have pulses that come through here. So the count up only counts, only adds one to that memory location when it goes from a false to a true. So when it's a, a rising indicator. Um, so the other thing is it's uh, it's all has to do, this is a count up, but if we had a count down addressed to C50, it would all just be changing the data that's in this one row in the memory location. Um, I saw some other people that had like multiple count ups and count downs and they wanted the done bit on just one of them to make, but they were all set to the same address. Um, all Everything you have set to that address is really just changing the data in this one row. It's not like they're separate counters. Um, I mean, they're separate counters in your logic, but they're all going to the same memory location to change the data, if that makes sense. So I'm going to run this, and the reason that I have it, the reason that I have it uh, at 315 is that in the instructions over here, it tells you to go to approximately 90% full. So the easiest way for me to figure out what 90% full was, was to figure out what full was. So if I make it higher than 315, it overflows a little bit. So then I took 315 times 0.9, and I got 283.5. That should be 90%. We'll just go with 285. Sounds close enough. This is approximate. So we'll go offline here, 285. We're offline. I should be able to edit this. There we go. So now when we run it, it'll go up to 90%. Um, the other requirements are that it should have a full light that comes on when it goes up to 90%. So let's just double check this is gonna work the way you think it's gonna work. Reset timers and counters and reset the simulation and download. 
and run. And now we start now, it should go up to 90%. So it should be like something like up here and shut off because when this timer is done, it kills power to the pump right here. That looks pretty full. Cool. So now we need to add one for our flow light or a full light. Go, and our full light is right here. Drag that right over and then I don't think we can drag our done bit. So some of the stuff on this animation and on over here you can't drag but you can always drag it from here. So this is counter C50 so it's the top row and I want the done bit to make the full light so when the counter counts up to 90% and shuts it off I want it to indicate that it's full. So my done bit is right here. I can drag it from there right to there. So now when this counter's done, I'll get my full light. Um, what's the other thing we need to do here? Filling operation is to halt immediately if the stop switch is pressed. I believe that's currently happening, but let's, uh, let's make sure my full light runs first. Oh, I got the full light on now because I didn't reset the counters and I have to go offline to do that. Now I'm going to verify it's going to go to 90. It's going to hit my full light. Yes, now I'm going to reset and make sure my stop works. Um, the requirements are filling is the filling operation is to halt immediately if the stop switch is pressed. I'm pretty sure that's going to work, but we've got to check it. Everything else looks good. So let's add in this TOD here. Um, I need to add another rung. I'm trying to remember where that's at. That's in some obscure, is it compute? Yeah, there you go. And you don't need anything, you can just leave that on all the time. You don't need any inputs or any requirements for that to be working. And this is another one where you can't really grab the accumulated from this counter in your ladder, but you can grab it from over here. And it is right here. Um, they have in the example C51, I don't know why, but a lot of the examples in this Logix Pro instruction has you start with one. I think they start with T41 for timers too and C51 for counters. And zero is the, the lowest numbered one that's available. So um, I don't know if they do that so that you have to look into it to figure out how to set it up properly, or I'm not sure why they do that. Um, and then I think I can drag this output zero. Output one zero four. Let me see if that'll come off there. No, it won't. Let's try. See if that works. I'm resetting everything. So now we should have a display on these, on this indicator over here. Um, in the instructions, it says that's helpful or whatever, but I always just look at what the, the counts are on the accumulated of the counter. I never look at this thing. I'm only putting it on there to show you guys that it works and how to configure it. Um, but to me, it's not helpful because I'm usually looking at the ladder and seeing what's being made and what's not being made and what's getting power at the right time. Um, it's not real helpful to look over here at your stop start buttons while the things run into me anyway. But this should work. Yeah, there we go. So now we see it incrementing right here. And this should stop at 90 and we should get our full light. There we go. So that is exercise one. Now we'll be moving on to exercise two.